oversimplifying the issue. I mean, how really, Douglas, how dare you say that those people who are coming from countries other than Syria are not refugees and do not have a right to be in this country? How dare you say that simply because they may have ended up in one other European country before they found their way to Calais, we do not owe them a duty? That is, I, I quite frankly, I, say, I think that is shameful. Well. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we'll be checking out another video where a woke journalist tried to frame and counsel Douglas Murray, but was dismantled. Wow. I believe this is going to be an interesting one. Let's check out the video. Go. But the migrants, by doing this, are not abiding by the rules and the laws that are meant to exist in Europe. So when they arrive in Calais, they are already... Uh, having, they were already in contravention of the, the, the laws that we're meant to have, which, as I say, is meant that they should have claimed asylum when they arrived in Italy or in Greece. They should not have ended up in Calais. And once they're breaking those rules and ending up in Calais, this country does not owe them a duty. Secondly, on this, issue, on this issue approach. of uh, whether or not they're all refugees, they are not all refugees. By the, um, by the statement by, made by, for instance, the Vice Commissioner of the European, uh, uh, um, the Vice President of the European Commission, Franz Timmermans, earlier this year, of the people who arrived last year alone, uh, the European Commission says that around 60% of them have no more right than anyone else in the world to be claiming asylum but, but in Europe. But we're so assessing let, so the is, right of people to yes, come here. Is it is, fair to put them through dental right. checks, medical checks of some uh, description to assess whether they are the right people to come to this country? Of course it is. Um, the strange thing about this debate is, if I may say so, the reason why it goes so wrong and why you can hear very nasty things on all sorts of sides at the moment is because we keep on trying to shut down very general and sometimes very practical suggestions. David Davies is not the Prime Minister, he is a backbench MP, and he suggested on Twitter that maybe people could have dental checks. Now, dental checks are one of the ways on the continent which people use to try to work out the age of m people who claim to be refugees and who are migrants, some of them whom are refugees. That is one way of doing it. But there's a very strange reaction we have of trying to shut down and shut up anyone making such a suggestion. Our continent is in a crisis on this question at the moment. And instead of addressing the roots of that crisis, instead of addressing the huge things that are happening, we have these weird debates about what one backbench MP has said about people's teeth. This is well, not a I, I suitable think the point way. that Samantha's making is what does it say about us as a country? Well, it says about us that we need to have a legal manner of allowing people into this country. And it is appropriate that we find some way of testing their age. If, and if you don't the, like teeth, you've got to come up with another way. These are because of circumstance, but are they absolutely. not? Absolutely, and I think that's the very, very germane point you just made, without paperwork, because of circumstances. And may I just say, regrettably, despite what is his rather extensive experience in this area, um, Douglas has just actually fallen into the trap of oversimplifying this question, oversimplifying the issue. I mean, how really, Douglas, how dare you say that those people who are coming from countries other than Syria are not refugees and do not have a right to be in this country? How dare you say that simply because they may have ended up in one other European country before they found their way to Calais, we do not owe them a duty? That is, I, I quite frankly, I, say, I think that is shameful. Well, um, I don't know who appointed um, you the school mom of this debate, well, but let me just explain to you what the facts are on this. Uh, we do owe an asylum, uh, uh, a legitimate asylum, to people who are genuinely fleeing war and conflict. However, as I say, if the European Commission's own figures of 60%, uh, which they came up with with Frontex of last year, of people are not people with any right to be here, we have to address this. And it comes back to it again, you see. Instead of addressing it, we have the how dare yous, the I think this is appalling, you, this, is sh this is shameful. Because oh, we can't sides, actually, have, don't because, we? Well, I haven't said that, of course. I, I find my fellow guests here to simply have different views from me. But this is the problem with this debate. Millions of people have come into Europe and millions more will be coming and our continent probably cannot cope with that. Now I suggest that in order to deal with this very large problem we have a very wide ranging discussion. But if we try I to agree. school marm it and shut it down as you've tried with David Davies and as you've just tried not very subtly with me we can't get anywhere. Can I just How make one comment? 
Douglas has said, he, he, you made one point which I think is, is actually the very point about oversimplification. You say the continent is in crisis. Douglas, I beg to differ. The world is in crisis. And actually that is the issue that we all need to take on board. It's not simply a case of, oh, let's ring fence Europe and let's protect Europe and let's shut our eyes to what is going on in the rest of the world. And really that is what I think the debate is about. But, but do we have to prioritize and therefore when there are genuine child migrants in the most vulnerable situations and desperate to get out the jungle camp in calais is going to be demolished within a matter of days do we not have to ensure that the right people are given asylum in this country and therefore it may be regrettable but are those tests not what is needed i think that we absolutely do have to ensure that the right people are granted asylum age tests are actually normal and and part of the process in uh, uh, asylum law and actually in other areas of law you'll find that in family law and also in criminal law but, but the way that but the age tests are applied go. at the moment it, it is is by appearance it, it, isn't it, it and it behavior which, which has been proven by the home office figures not to be working but my my point the point i'm trying to make is this that do we focus on the appearance and say that these children um, appear in fact this is the real problem with the, the, the current state of the debate we're saying and people I would say who are on the other side of the debate suggest that because certain people appear to be older they should not even be brought to this country to even be assessed at the expense and of others yes you see this is the problem is that these are well, people who have jumped actually, the queue they go and have then lied checks. about their identity they go through rigorous checks in Calais mm. and, and there are organizations within Calais for, for such as Citizens UK, who can tell you, who can give you chapter and verse on the types of checks that are done in Calais. So the fact that certain people may arrive in the UK looking a bit older, people who, by the way, have gone through war, have gone through no. absolutely harrowing emotional no, experiences. And I don't think this debate can, can is just, questioning just, the, the need, but it is questioning no. whether or not... Sorry, we uh, do need to question the need on this, because as I say, I reiterate, there is already legitimate uh, uh, grounds for people from Syria fleeing the Syrian civil war to claim asylum. But, but that but is if a you, wider if debate, you, isn't sorry, it? What we're looking just, at specifically yes. here, Douglas, if you don't mind, what we're looking at specifically here is whether or not it is right to have medical checks to yes, assess and age we, and I've whether those said, people should I've be granted asylum. I've just said asylum. that it is, and actually you have just said that it is. It is legitimate to check people's yes. ages. Yes, I don't uh, So we're in agreement on this. But where we're not on agreement, which is why I come back to it, is that all of the people in Calais have, for instance, fled war. They haven't. If you go to Calais, and if you go to the points of entry, like the Italian points of entry, most of the people are fleeing from sub-Saharan Africa and have no more right to claim asylum is, is than anyone else in, in the Croydon world. This week, are they to, are they older than they should be? Some people suggesting that they might be in their mid twenties up yes. to thirty, and does that then raise a child protection issues? But are we then giving them places at the expense? of others who are desperately in need. Of course we are. Of I don't think are. we are actually. I don't think we are giving them places at the expense of others who are in need and that's the real point here. They are going through rigorous checks in Calais to ensure that they are of the age that they ought to be to fall within the legislation. Now, one or two may slip through the net. I don't deny. Two thirds slip through well, the net according to the Home Office figures. So yes, last year. Days. Last year, that's quite right. They said that out of the 933 or so, 626 were a little older. A little older. Now, we're not talking about men of 40 and 35 entering the United Kingdom. We're talking about people of perhaps, as opposed to 17, 20 or 21. A, a, Let us consider their lost years. A, a year make in terms of need. Uh, and that's the real question. The question is whether or not you reward people, first of all, breaking the rules by ending up in Calais, and secondly, reward them by allowing them to lie and getting away with it. And I think this is a very unwise thing to encourage. There is already a process in Europe for people to claim asylum. If you reward people who jump ahead of that queue and you reward people who lie, including it lying about right their age, about it's very unwise. reward when we think unwise. about what a lot of these people have been I through to get there in the first place. I reiterate place. the point. If you go to the points of entry, you will see that most of the people coming into Europe have no more right to be here than anybody else in the world. They are fleeing poverty. They are fleeing situations well, that where, we where in Europe... Where does compassion come into this? Where does compassion come into this? Sorry, can I just Because this is a very important dis uh, disagreement. No. Everyone in the, in the world who is poor does not have the right to come to Europe. They do not. That's we do right. not want Douglas, them here. Douglas, we do not want them here. We cannot afford them. We cannot uh, um, integrate them. We cannot afford Douglas, to keep them here. Douglas, that's quite right, and that's not actually the status of this debate. 
You know, that's not the question. And I'm, I'm shutting you down on talking about poverty because I think that you're obfuscating the because, point. No, because you just you said, no. you just said, sorry, you were interrupting me to say, does, does being poor not you, is you, the reason to come here? And I'm saying, no, it is being not. Being poor is some, a reason that certain people, and I think you need to look at what you call poverty. You need to look at some of the circumstances that some of these people may be living in that yes. you call economic migration, but yes. in fact is something quite different. Well, we are talking here about vulnerable children who are living in the Calais jungle. I don't believe that we're talking in, in this case about people fleeing poverty. I believe that we are talking about people fleeing war. Well, and you, in, you, if we are... With all due respect, you can believe whatever you like, but that is not the reason to give the, uh, make the British government allow and reward people who break rules. We have a policy to give people asylum. You cannot have a policy that then rewards people who break the law and who then lie. So are you saying that regardless of age, people, vulnerable children in the Calais jungle, however they may have got there, shouldn't be given a place no, in this country. I'm saying that we need a proper system of, of, of assessing people's desires and their wants and their claims. A and, and in the and, meantime, and, with, the, and with so the jungle due to be demolished, what do we do? Well, clearly this is part of the process of trying to speed up the emptying of the so-called jungle in Calais. And the government here has obviously agreed to wave some people through more easily than they would have done in order to help the French authorities close the so-called jungle. But, you know, please, in this country, we always get obsessed with a few thousand people in Calais, and people always say, if we can, if we can bring these people in, they have no understanding of what comes after when you reward illegal entry. I listened to a very interesting interview this morning with a lady who had been a foster carer for a young man who'd come from Syria. She then found out that he was 21 mm. and not 14, as she believed. So precisely the type of case we're talking about. And that, she was and that asked, is what David Davis raised about child protection Absolutely, issues. absolutely. And I think that there is an issue there. And we do need to conduct the checks. And we do need to ensure that the law is properly applied. However, I think that we also need to be careful how we do so, so that we don't also breach our own humanitarian obligations okay. and go beyond and outside the spirit of the law. Samantha Davies, oh, Douglas Murray, we are out of time, but thank you both very much. Wow. What an interesting debate. You can tell this was really, really heated. And I believe uh, the lady was not uh, intellectually honest to some extent. And you can tell she was also uh, a little bit arrogant. You don't have to uh, insult someone to prove your point. Because you can tell at some point in the debate, uh, she, she was uh, saying something like, Douglas, how dare you? How dare you? You don't have to uh, try to prove your point by, you know, by daring someone in the debate. You just, if you are not okay with what someone said, you just have to, uh, you know, Try to prove your point uh, to the person by stating facts. You don't have to insult the person. You don't have to be arrogant. You just have to state your facts in order to be able to prove your point to the person. And I like the fact that uh, both uh, the lady, the, the lawyer, the barrister, and Douglas, at some point, uh, they all agreed that, uh, that there is the need for people that are coming into Europe, that are coming into UK, there's a need for them to be uh to be to 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 go through there's a need for them to follow uh the legal process there's a need for them to go through some uh, medical tests before they are granted entry and i for one i don't see anything wrong with that uh, i don't see anything wrong with that if people are coming to your country uh uh there's a need for you to be able to assess the people that are coming into your country so you know the caliber of people that are coming in and I believe Douglas always say this, that uh, the problem Europe is having right now, the problem UK is having right now, is a problem of mass immigration, that a lot of people that have committed crimes, that have engaged in all sorts of uh, or crimes, terrorism in their own country, that uh, they, end up, they end up making their way into the UK, into Europe, without being properly assessed. So... I feel that there's there's no there's nothing bad in taking the people through some rigorous tests, be it medical be it medical tests or teeth tests. I don't see anything wrong with that. Because at the end of the day, if the people come into the country and they are not able to uh, integrate, they are not able to integrate, they'll end up causing harm to the country. And that's what Douglas always talk about, that a lot of people 
come from their own country with their own imported culture, with their own imported behavior, and they try to uh, to impose their own culture on the on the British people. They fail to integrate because I believe every country has its own identity, as we all know. British has their own identity. Um, British identity is embodied and rooted in their culture. Is rooted in their tradition, is rooted in their value system. So I believe there's a need for people coming into uh, Europe, coming into your country to be assessed in order for you to know the people that are coming in. Because at the end of the day, uh, if you if they don't go through the right process, uh, they might end up, you know, causing harm to the country. They might end up causing harm to the country. So I don't see anything bad in taking people through some uh, tests, uh, in, through some medical tests in order for them to be able to be granted entry. I don't see anything bad with that. It's just to be able to uh, know the people that are actually coming into the country. And if you are coming into a country, there's a need for you to come in through the legal process. You don't need to cut corners. You don't need to lie. You don't need to break uh, the rules. You just have to come in through the right process and the people will be ready to accommodate you. So I also like to hear your comments. Let's get a conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button. Click on the like button. Do have a nice day.